All right, last episode, we cleaned up the intake parts with Mirino Spirits and Solvent just to be able to show you guys the shape and all the things that we did before final assembly. This time, we're gonna talk about the combustion chambers. We actually die cam the ring, a ring around the chambers. This way we can show you when we lay out the head gasket on top of it and we'll show you something and here it is. The alignment of the chamber to the bore itself and of course because of certain calculations that we'll talk about later this is something you don't want to miss <laughs> First things first, our new page is up and running, so like and follow the page, guys. The link will be in the description below. For the locals and even international, a pinned price list is there for the basic labor, including ECU tuning and everything else like cam degreeing. As you can see here, we post up even regular day work at the shop, even when we're claying the B16B engine. Here you go, we're posting it. And of course, we gotta try to keep up to date on all the stuff that we do that doesn't really make the videos all the time like for example once again we're reporting another b16y8 intake manifold we can't be posting videos of manifold all the time so we just post it there so link will be in the description below so like and follow guys i'll see you there all right now here on the d16a6 chamber we die cam the areas around the chamber this way we can show you what we're actually gonna talk about which is the chamber alignment to the bore most will say or think it's a small thing or a small detail and it's true it's a small detail but when you think about it the b series is slightly better and the k series is almost perfect and hey of course they have a bigger displacement but their volumetric efficiency is miles ahead of the d series this could be one small thing that leads to improving that you know hey like you said on an earlier post I did on the page, we will leave no stone unturned on this project. This way we can share everything with you guys. That's another reason why you should like and follow the page. All right, and now back to the head. The reason why I put die cam around the chambers is actually just for you guys because the machine shop doesn't need that because they will use the head gasket to align the chamber or to reference the chamber bore. But of course, just for you guys, I decided to put die cam and we can line up or scribe a line and show you how mismatched the actual chambers are to add to the actual bore. Look at that. The chamber is a bit to the left, right? You can see the space on the right side is less, a little less. And on chamber number two, it's a, a number three. I know, yeah, number two is a little okay. And this one is a bit to the left. And this one is the opposite. It's a bit to the right. Like nothing is equal or nothing is aligned perfectly or properly. And so, you know, that's a small thing that could actually improve efficiency. So now with time lapse, we're going to show you uh, we scribe a line on the chamber or around the deck that's based on the head gasket. And so you can see how big of a difference they are. All right. Okay, all done. Let's unclip the phone after we take off the head gasket. Let's unclip it and show you guys closer. As you can see here, look, it's slightly off to the left, right? Even on the top on the exhaust side or the intake side, sorry. It's way off. I mean, hopefully you guys can see it because the machine shop will just use the head gasket as reference point. So it will be perfectly aligned to the bore after when they're done with it and here you can see you can actually see this look number two or actually number three sorry it's off everywhere right it it's not really just bigger it's it's actually misaligned locally they call it counter bore but i know in the u.s it's called fly cut so we're gonna have this fly cut by the machine shop or you know counter bore 
And if so far this video is something really good for you, hit the like button because this generates more activity and the algorithm will pick it up and spread it to a wider audience. And so what I'm trying to achieve here is each view gives a like, that will be really awesome because it will help grow the channel even better and spread the video everywhere. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification because the, the truth here is actually I'm trying to build a community where we can all talk about our own engines and of course i'll try to help every single question that you guys have after we share all the stuff that we do at the shop in this way it's gonna help everyone like the old days on the forums of course more shop customers help a lot but you some of you guys have already sent us a dm asking questions about their engines hey you guys know it was worth it and worth sending us dm because i always answer thoroughly and just like that, the head is back from the machine shop and it's done with a counter bore or fly cut. As you can see, the chamber is now is perfectly aligned to the head gasket, which is aligned to the bore. Now, all we gotta do is clean the chamber up, CC the volume, of course, but now let's go to the porting bench and work on it. All right, here we are. We actually did the carbide earlier because it was kind of hard getting the angle while the phone is on the stand looking at the head. So we had to do it without recording the phone. So here it is, but it's still unfinished. We still got to keep making some passes. Now we're going with 80 grit. So we're going to get the shape good. And of course, be careful not to get the deck or the valve seat. That's going to be a headache. And actually, you know, something I want to talk about here, when I port chambers, a lot of people port the chambers just to see, just to show or see how the chambers look good based on the bore or the gasket. But also you have to include the fact that flow is coming from the intake ports across the valve seat into the chamber. So the flow is going inward, right? But when you go to the exhaust, just as now we're going to invert the head here. Okay, here, like on the exhaust. Now the flow is coming from the chamber into the exhaust port and out. So you gotta understand how you're shaping it or even the texture matters here. All right, now let's look at it close. All right, yes, sir. Oh, look at that. Now it's all ready and all good. Smoothed out so there's no, there's less chance of pre-ignition. It's gonna be running really good. So now let's wash this up, but let's talk about this one now. All right, now as we got it cleaned, we actually did uh, the, a quick test with the check with the CC, just a real quick one. We're still gonna do this on the final assembly. We're gonna recheck it again. So we checked it and it went to 40 CC volume on the chamber. It was 38 OEM, the stock one. And here's a reason why you guys should like and follow the page. Cause look, let me scroll down. Let me show you, oh, there, there. Okay, here, we actually, wrote down the specifications of a PM3 piston and a PMO piston, which is a D13 Hyper 16, which is 30.7 millimeter compression height. And so when you use that on a D16, it sticks out 0 0.027 of an inch or almost one millimeter. Well, it's 0.7 millimeter, so that sticks out. So we actually could afford losing a bit of compression or more volume in the chamber here it is looking at it close so it's 30.7 compression height and so you get the calculation it's gonna stick out 0 0.027 of an inch out of the deck or 0.7 millimeter almost one millimeter that's crazy right and when I first built this a couple of years ago, I calculated it. It came out to be 13.25 is to 1 compression. So I just run it, rounded it off to 13.2 is to 1, but it's 13.25 is to 1 static compression. And this time with 40cc chamber, it's down by 12.95 is to 1 static compression. So technically it's still 13 is to 1, but it's 12.29, uh, 12. 0.95 is to one compression so it's still not bad for that's the price we pay for a more consistent chamber and of course this will make an efficient chamber burn or combustion burn hey so maybe that's even more power right all right here now the chamber or the whole head is actually really clean now with solvent and of course mineral, mineral spirits first as you can see Suddenly, this time, 
this setup or my engine suddenly has a bigger chance of making even more power than previously when it had the stock chambers because this is gonna be having a more efficient burn you know making efficient power and that means the total is gonna be even better right let me try to show you guys closer the rare moment or not really not many people tend to show this but here you can see the short turn sorry i was trying to focus the phone here you can see the short turn is blended really well to the valve seat the better you know the, the more efficient you blend the short turn towards the valve seat the better flow and the more power you start making that's really good and it's actually really difficult so maybe that's why no one no one else shows that. And it's funny, it reminds me early days, someone commented that they all look the same. Well, actually, they all look the same to the untrained eye. So you just identified yourself. Anyways, let's take a look at it again a little further with a, with a little bit better clarity. As you can see, even with the light, it shows you it curves nicely on the short turn all the way to the intake port entry. You can see from the deep side of from the chamber on the intake side, it goes, you can see the entry. Yes, sir. And of course, you can see the size of the chamber. They're all cleaned up. The better you have a combustion quality, the faster the burn and the faster the burn, the better acceleration and of course, more power. And isn't that what we're all after? Yes, sir. All right, now let me show you this. I've shown this before on, on the gap port matching video that we did, but here it is again. Here, we cut our own intake gasket from a folder. You know, it doesn't, you know, it's fine. But this way, we can cut it exactly how the head is. And this way, we can match it to the intake manifold perfectly. Or you can have a calculated step for anti-reversion. This way, it's going to be really good. I'll show you. We scribe a line on outside the flange, but we time-lapse this so it doesn't get too boring. We scribe a line on the outside perimeter of the flange. This way, it's marked up on the intake gasket that we made. We quicken this up. We have to be careful not to tear it so that when we rest it against the intake manifold, we can match it really well like this. Here you can see it now laid up against the intake manifold aligned well on the flange and you can see here look at that we actually already port matched this when we first built the d16a6 it, there's actually a small step like a half an inch or half a millimeter or 0 0.020 of an inch step so it's not really noticeable but it's it's still there it's right there for that little anti-reversion trick or if it works it's good right not there's nothing else to lose and so hopefully i gotta make a bit more money because i'm spending a lot on myself on this project because we still have to work on the air conditioning system because we need to move around just for the ram air system that i'm that i've designed and we're gonna keep showing you guys all those work so don't you worry about it you'll check it out and of course after that we're gonna start assembling the head and then putting uh, it on the block on the car and starting it up and of course we'll do the startup with you guys so hey this is gonna be really fun right and for the, on the next one we'll talk about the injectors that we're gonna use because it's definitely not stock but we'll do we'll share you a, a bit of the reasons and findings and why we're running what we're running plus we're already running an, a wall bro fuel pump the 2255 two, lph so it's gonna be all good we're not gonna run out of fuel on the fuel pump right and of course you know when the next one is done you can just click it here